Earlier this month, Apple announced the M2 chip at WWDC, and of course they're putting it in their new laptops, specifically a redesigned MacBook Air, as well as the 13-inch MacBook Pro body that we've already seen with the M1 chip. I think the M2 is a really great value. I think there's a lot there for video editors who are just starting out, and they're looking for a decent laptop that isn't super expensive. So I've had the MacBook Pro 13 inch. This has the original M1 in it. I've had it for about a year and a half now. I got it before the 14 inch and the 16 inch models came out with the Pro level chips. And overall, I do think it's a good laptop, but it's just, it's kind of a weird one. It doesn't fit in Apple's lineup in a way that makes a lot of sense to me, especially now with the redesigned MacBook Air in the mix. I just don't really know what this product is for or who it's for. So if you're wondering, should I buy the MacBook Air or should I buy the MacBook Pro, as someone who owns the M1 MacBook Pro, you should buy a MacBook Air. Let me tell you why. And before we begin, just so we're on the same page, this is the original M1 chip. I upgraded it to 16 gigabytes of RAM, eight core GPU, and one terabyte of storage. Let's talk about the screen size. It's 13 inches, and I actually really love it for everything except editing. It's a great size for any sort of content consumption, right? If I'm browsing the web, if I'm doing emails, if I'm doing accounting, just watching YouTube videos, I really, really like it because it's light, it's portable, not too hefty, and uh, it's just easy to take around. However, for editing, it is really, really cramped. Premiere is okay. I think the panels in Premiere resize better and you can kind of make do, but in DaVinci Resolve, it is really, really tight. It's really hard to use Resolve without turning off a lot of your windows and a lot of panels to kind of be able just to see your timeline. And so that makes it really, really challenging to use. But I don't think this is a huge issue if you can get an external display. In fact, I think I would rather plug into an external display while I'm working and then take it out and still have the small size for whatever I'm out and about. But if this is your only machine, then you might need to look at a 14 or even the 16 inch MacBook Pro in order to have that extra screen real estate. The second consideration I would have with the MacBook Pro is the I.O. situation. There's only two Thunderbolt ports on the left side of the machine. Now, because they're Thunderbolt ports, that's great if you have Thunderbolt devices and you can daisy chain all of it. Otherwise, it's fairly restricting, especially without an SD card slot. For instance, if you need to charge your MacBook, now you're using one port and you only have one port left for a drive or some other device, and that's gonna cause problems really quickly. Now one way to solve this problem, if it's gonna live on your desk, is you can use an OWC Thunderbolt dock. This is the Thunderbolt 4 dock. On the front has the Thunderbolt port that your laptop plugs into. It also has a USB 2.0 port and an SD card slot. And then on the back is where tons of stuff is. Three Thunderbolt 3 ports, three USB-A 3.2 ports, an ethernet port. So this is a really solid hub to have if you're gonna use the MacBook Pro as a workstation at your desk. It runs about $300 and it's really useful if you're using it with a desktop setup. If you need something cheaper or a lot more portable, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to go with one of these Anchor Hubs that plugs right into the side of the MacBook. That gives you one Thunderbolt port on the side, two USB-A ports, a USB-C port, and an SD card reader and a micro SD card reader. So that's really handy if you just need something to expand your MacBook Pro when you're on the go or you're on set. Perfect for that to dump cards. You're gonna to wanna to grab one of these probably no matter what. Now when it comes to performance, for a laptop at this price point, it's pretty excellent. It's pretty hard to ask for anything more. The UI is really snappy, apps open really quick, and most timelines scrub and playback really fast, really easily. It handles H.264 codecs really well, and because it's Apple, of course, it handles ProRes really well. I record this stuff to my Ninja 5 right up there. That records ProRes, and they play back really great. Even in 4K on the MacBook Pro, I can edit some of these videos back and have no issues at all in DaVinci Resolve. It's not all perfect, though. I would say that if you start getting into 4K timelines with heavier codecs, it will start to struggle. It also chugs a lot when dealing with multicam sequences, and that seems to be a problem regardless of what app you're in, Premiere or Resolve or something else. Any heavy codecs like RED or RAW codecs or 8K footage, probably not going to get a lot of luck with that on this machine. After Effects runs really well. It's perfect for lower thirds, titles, small VFX shots. I even designed all the graphics for this channel on the MacBook Pro, and it did that just fine. And those were also in 4K and After Effects, so hey. 
Resolve runs amazing as well, especially now that it's optimized for Apple Silicon. I know I mentioned earlier that it can't handle heavy codecs, but B-RAW is an exception. It runs extremely well on this machine. I downloaded their demo footage from the Blackmagic website, and I was amazed that a 12K clip in a 4K timeline with grades was playing back just fine. Really gotta give credit to Blackmagic for that and how well optimized their software is and their codecs are. It's quite impressive. However, I will say that the M1 struggles with noise reduction. So if you have a lot of noisy footage running a lot of noise reduction, it's gonna chug a lot. Overall, for this price and the spec, it runs really great. I think it's a pretty good deal. It was comparable to my old PC, which was a six core i7 with a GTX 1080 in it. I would say that that PC probably ran After Effects comps bigger because it had 32 gigabytes of RAM. And that leads me to my next point, which is the RAM issue. Now there's nothing wrong with a RAM per se, but the problem is, is that Apple starts the configurations with only eight gigabytes of RAM. Premiere and Resolve both recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM for optimal performance and it shows. I think a lot of YouTubers talk about the swap memory on the new M1s and that's a thing, but I promise you like you're gonna need more RAM. I've seen it happen on this machine and even the higher end ones, like you can run out of RAM. If you have a lot of apps open, you're doing a lot of tasks, I will get an error message that says that the memory has run out. So swap isn't always gonna save you, you can't rely on it. You should definitely get more RAM if you can get it. However, to upgrade that RAM from eight to 16, that's a $200 upgrade. Which leads me into the next point, which is just the general value proposition of the MacBook Pro 13. If you buy the 13 inch MacBook Pro, you upgrade the RAM and then you buy one of the docks I mentioned earlier, well now you're pretty close to just buying the base model 14 inch, which overall is just a better computer. You'd get more ports, you'd get the SD card slot, you'd get the HDR 120 hertz screen, plus more RAM, plus more storage. Overall, it's just a better package if you're a working professional. However, where the race gets a little closer is comparing this MacBook Pro to the new redesigned MacBook Air. Now there's a few notable differences between this computer and the new MacBook Air. The performance is gonna be pretty comparable, especially if they both have the M2. I think the MacBook Pro 13 does start with an extra two GPU cores. You get 10 instead of eight, but that's not gonna make a huge performance difference. The 13 inch Pro also still has the touch bar, which is pretty eh. It also has a fan, which might be useful for longer edits and longer renders, but these chips run so cool that I wouldn't really be concerned about using this stuff for like average editing work. And if you have a really heavy editing workflow, then again, you're probably just gonna be looking at the 14 or the 16 inch pros, and not one of these. The Air also brings back the MagSafe port, which might seem insignificant, but like we talked about earlier, now you can charge your laptop, plug in multiple drives, or have a drive and an SD card dongle. It's just gonna make your life a lot easier to have that extra port doing the charging, and you can use the USB for other stuff. Overall, I think that's why this is a weird product. It's not really cheap enough or powerful enough to make it compelling against any of the other laptops in Apple's lineup. It can't compete power-wise with the 14 or the 16 inch. And for the same amount of power, you might as well buy a MacBook Air and save money. I think if you're a professional editor already, you're gonna be looking at the 14 inch or the 16 inch pros with the M1 Pro or the M1 Max chips. And that's definitely where you should look. But if you're a beginner and you're just trying to find a machine that isn't too expensive and can edit reasonably well, I think the M2 MacBook Air that's coming out is by far the better machine. Having MagSafe and having regular function keys back again is overall just gonna be a better experience for usability. Plus that midnight blue color is mm, so good. Now, if you just get that laptop and you upgrade it to 16 gigabytes of RAM, I think you're gonna be in a really sweet spot for performance and price. Hopefully you found this review helpful if you're looking for a laptop to kind of get started with editing in. Personally, I am going to keep my MacBook Pro. Uh, I don't really have a reason to upgrade. However, my wife is looking for a new machine and I am definitely going to steer her towards that new MacBook Air. Plus having this laptop isn't really a problem for me because it's not my daily driver. I actually use a new Mac Studio. I've had that for about three weeks now and in short, I really love that computer. And of course you should stay tuned because I'm gonna be making a video about it probably in the next couple weeks or so. I have a feeling that new redesigned MacBook Air is gonna be a really popular machine. So good luck getting your pre-order in and uh, good luck waiting eight weeks for it to show up at your house if you do. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.